Ladies and gentlemen, I, I hope you've enjoyed the opportunity this week to connect with fellow governors-elect, to talk about Rotary, and in particular, to talk about the future of Rotary. So today I'm here to speak with you about that future, our future. Keep in mind that our world is changing rapidly. In fact, many of you may be aware of the discussions around the start of the fourth industrial revolution. The first industrial revolution used water and steam power. The second used electrical power. The third is the digital age. The fourth, however, will be a combination of technologies, a combination that will blur the lines between the physical, the digital, and the biological spheres. I suggest to you that regardless of the fast pace of change in the world, who we are will not change. At our core, the essence of who we are as Rotarians must not and will not change. So it's in this context that I have asked you to share your visions with us on the future of Rotary. Each of you may recall that on Monday morning I started my theme speech with a story about my own International Assembly almost 20 years ago. It will probably not surprise you that 20 years ago no one asked for my opinions on what Rotary would look like in the future. Well, you, the district governors of 2017-18, have been asked that very question and you have responded. You are asked at the breakouts on Monday and in addition, you've been sent a survey via email. We value and want your input. And if you've not yet submitted the survey, there's another 30 days for you to complete that survey. So take the time to let us know how you feel and what you'd like to see happen as Rotary moves forward. Keep in mind that your responses will not be lost or forgotten. We will deliver the results of your responses to the Strategic Planning Committee. The committee will review your responses and take them into account together with other feedback they receive from Rotarians right around the world. You collectively are helping shape the next great vision and strategy for our organisation. Now, before I give you the summary of what you collectively have stated here, let's set the right tone. In order to look forward, it's always a good thing to first look back. Let's take a look at the world 10 years ago, take a look at the world today, and then let's try to take a peek at the world 10 years into the future. First, we'll take a look at cell phones. 2007, I had one of those. 2017. And possibly what a commercial, what a, what a personal communication device might look like in 2027. Next, computers. Is it possible that in the future we might actually be wearing our computers? Wearing a computer in the form of a contact lens. What about cars? First, 2007. No, I didn't have one of those. <laughs> Today, the electric Tesla is certainly an impressive vehicle. For 2027, I don't know about you, but I'm not sure I'll ever feel safe traveling in a driverless car. <laughs> and that explains to us, or indicates to us a bit, that maybe change is difficult at times. Many of us may never be willing to step into a driverless car. However, there's little doubt that someday driverless cars will be coming right at us. And so it is with change in Rotary. It will be difficult at times for us to adapt to changes. We may change the ways in which we connect, the ways in which we interact, or the ways in which we serve. However, rest assured, who we are will never change. Social media has moved quickly from Facebook to all kinds of social media, such as Twitter, Instagram, etc. 
Who knows what may happen by 2027? In the entertainment arena, we've gone from DVDs to Netflix and the emerging virtual reality experience for 2027. Again, who knows? Is it possible that holograms will appear regularly in homes near you? And finally, I want to highlight how we have and will find our way around. In 2007, just a few vehicles had a computerized GPS built into the car. Today, most of us have a GPS built into our phone. By 2027, is it possible that three-dimensional maps will be superimposed on the windshield of our cars, showing us the right way to go? Doesn't matter if it's driverless, but let's not dwell on that. <laughs> of course, finding our way is what the strategic planning process is all about. Without a plan, we can't hope to advance. A new vision and a new strategic plan is like a GPS guiding us on the way in the direction we want to go. Finally, let's look at Rotary leadership 10 years ago. Now, and 10 years into the future. <laughs> Having looked at the past, the present, and the future, we're now well prepared to look at the feedback from you, the District Governors of 2017-18. On Monday afternoon, you met in small groups and discuss the future of Rotary. You are asked to fast forward to the year 2025, assuming the following, allow me to refresh your memory. This is what you are asked. The year is 2025. Polio was eradicated several years ago. In the meetings of the Council on Legislation since you were District Governor, the Constitution and bylaws have changed significantly. Thinking about the discussion you just had on the core values in the future, you are asked to consider these questions. Firstly, Rotary has been making global headlines in the year 2025. For what major achievement or accomplishment? Secondly, what changes do you think Rotary would make or has made to its organisational structure to help achieve that accomplishment? And next, how did Rotarians connect with each other to contribute to that accomplishment. Now, as you considered these questions in your breakout session, the responses were both diverse and enlightening. In summary, the most common response included the following. As to the major accomplishments of Rotary by 2025, the top choices all involved service. It's clear that collectively, you truly believe in doing good in the world. The choices you made were, in order, peace, water and sanitation, literacy, and the environment. It's very clear in the feedback we received from your breakouts that you collectively are in favour of continuing our efforts to do good in the world, and your preference is in the four areas mentioned here. You, the District Governors-elect, indicated that the following changes would need to be put in place in order to achieve these accomplishments. One, scaling up the size of projects for more impact and more sustainability, leveraging the polio infrastructure. Secondly, stronger partnerships with large global organisations. Third, using the Rotary Action Groups and creating a cause-driven approach to attracting membership, such as clubs focused on just one area of focus or online platforms that create a vertical membership model, one where new members join Rotary directly at the international level based on their passion for a particular area of focus. Put simply, your feedback on the changes we need to make to accomplish these great things includes scaling up, leveraging the polio infrastructure, seeking stronger partnerships and attracting more members by creating cause-driven 
membership options. <laughs> to help make these accomplishments possible, you talked about three different approaches to increase membership. One, bringing more women into Rotary. Yay! <laughs> Two, bringing younger people into Rotary. <laughs> and three, creating membership options that are focused on single causes, such as joining a club that only does water projects. That's what you said. And finally, from a, a governance perspective, you emphasised decentralisation and creating a more regionalised approach. In addition, you wanted changes made to allow a younger, more vibrant leadership at the top of our organisation. And in light of that last comment, let me tell you... Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm not jumping off the stage, no. In light of that last comment, let me tell you about some of the early results of the worldwide survey that's been conducted as part of the strategic planning initiatives. The survey has been sent out to over 200,000 individuals, including Rotarians, alumni, and others associated with our organisation. Rotarians and alumni were asked to select from 15 different photos of individuals that best represent the makeup of an ideal organisation of the future, one that they would like to join. The top five photos selected to date by Rotarians are shown behind me. The top five photos selected by alumni are now shown behind me. <laughs> it's a much different mix. We have a long way to go. But we can and must strive to reach the diversity shown in that second group. So please remember, firstly, that Rotary at its core will not and must not change. Secondly, that we're here this week to discuss how the Rotary we all value so deeply can continue to serve and to grow, not just through this year or even through our lifetimes, but beyond. And thirdly, that we're here to help maintain and build a Rotary that is sustainable and that keeps sustainability and continuity at the heart of its focus and its planning from now on. And finally, we must remain relevant, be prepared to change, to lead and not follow, to provide inspiration and to aspire to greatness. Rotary making a difference in our communities, in our countries and in our world. Thank you. <laughs>